A lot of nothing. At least it's not cold out there. That's a good point. If you would, write your name on the back of one of my business cards. Probably here. He'll pass the pin down. Uh, we're gonna give uh, have a giveaway afterwards. You want one? Just write your name and then turn it back in. No, one per person. Just write your name is all we need. <laughs> Okay. Right here. Down there. Oh, that give you two? Thank you. Well, she. I mean, hi. Here, let me give you a business card. They'll pass my favorite ink in around. If I don't get the pen back, no deal. <laughs> so everybody got one so far? Yeah, hey, 
Everybody got one of my business cards? That's a big black one. I believe it is. I got it. Okay. Everybody here signed? Hold on just a minute. You're signed? Everybody signed? Nobody need a pen? You need a pen? Which camper are we going to win? Five. Five. <laughs> <laughs> This one right here. There you go. Perfect. Everybody's got a business card, right? Did you want to collect them? Yeah. Hold up your hand and Ben will come around and get your card. Again, everybody? Do you have a card? Uh, right on the front of the camera. Uh, right on the front of the camera. Thank you very much. and brake seminar. I'm Matthew. I'm new here. Ben is, uh, <laughs> uh, how long have you been here? Five years now. Five years. Five years. Five years. So, 
he came from the tire industry, so he knows a little bit about those. That's why we've got him up here. I uh, I just kind of follow along with him. So I think he's going to start with the tire information. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions, uh, we'll, we'll take them during and then after. You can stay a little bit later if you like. And we can talk about just whatever you need to talk about. So I'm going to hand it over to Ben. All right, I've got a few different uh, items to show you here. Uh, pretty good tire here. It's held air for quite a bit. And uh, a few. Uh, You might get this. Awesome. On the front page there, I've got a place card that you will find on the front right of your camper. It'll display uh, the tire size, tire load range, and PSI. The uh, ST kind of goes for special tires and trailer tire. Load range. There are many different types of load range. There would be C, which would be six ply, D, be eight ply, and uh, E, or ten ply, and so on and so forth. You will find uh, sizes and load range on the side of the tire. Kind of going off this. So. All right, let me help Ben out a little bit. He's a little nervous, a little but, uh, so we're going to forgive him. Um, but he can chime in anytime he wants to. Some of the key points of, of taking care of your tires and prepping your tires for trips. Number one, if you ever have a blowout, if you ever have to change tires, put the same size, tire, and load range back on the camper. And all that information is going to be on that placard, just like he said, on the left front of the camper. Nine times out of the ten, it's going to be there. If it's an older camper that's had some metal replaced or something like that, it won't be there. Um, in that case, get a hold of us. We can look it up from manufacturer and find out what should have been on it from the factory. Um, one thing to consider is most of your trailer tires are only rated to 65 mile an hour period. So if you're going over 65 mile an hour, you are taking a chance of having tire issues. They're not designed to go over that. Now some are, most are not. Again, you get your information off your tire and we can kind of give you a, a heads up uh, of what it should. And a lot of times that information will be on the tire as well. Um, but try and go back with the same size tire, same load range of tire. If you go, if you differ from that, your your speed and the weight on the tire change away from that placard. So it's designed to have those on there to have the right weight per tire. So if you change that, it actually it actually affects it. It also uh, affect uh, sway. Right. Like a low range D here, if it says uh, a low range D has a capacity of 1,220 pounds at 65 psi. As if it were low range E, it would be 1,520 at 80 PSI. So try and go back with what is on the camper from the factory. Uh, you can go up a load range. Um, you're going to get more additional sidewall. You're going to get more plies, two more plies if you go up a load range. But you're going to um, you're going to have to adjust that PSI as well. You're going to have to adjust the pressure of the tire as well. Um, next thing, check tire pressure before every trip every trip period before you leave you can't assume um, you have to check that an example we got on here is for every 10 degree in temperature drop you can lose up to two pounds of pressure per tire so if you check your tire pressure on a 90 degree day and set it on a 60 degree day it could be up to 12 pounds difference it's also Big. an increase in pressure as you're driving down the road. Uh -huh. And, and it will vice increase. versa, it will be increased if you check it on a cold day and set it on a cold day and it warms up. So that is key to making your tires last. Um, the reason for that, your sidewalls are not as um, flexible as the tread on the tire. So when you run one low, it even becomes, it, it becomes softer on the sides and that really, really 
causes issues with your sidewall. So you could have blowouts there from just, just tire pressure. You need to make sure your tires are checked. And a simple way to do that, you can get, Amazon has them, you can get screw-on caps that go from red to green when you're at the right tire pressure. So you set your tire pressure at what you want it at, screw this cap on, and it's a visual inspection. You walk by it, if it's green, you know you're at that pressure. If it's red, you know you need to air it up. Yes, sir. Will that tell you if it's gone over? No. No, we'll just tell you that well, if you, yeah, that's a good point. If it heats up, uh, it won't indicate that, but it will tell you for sure if you're low. So it's, it's gonna give you that. And those things are inexpensive. You can get a four pack for probably 20 bucks. So if you're not gonna have a fancy monitoring system or anything that tells you temperatures and pressures going down the road, uh, something like that would be better than nothing, but you still wanna check it before every trip. Um, keeping your tires away from the sun as much as you can is gonna help. Uh, tire guards, um, you can use uh, some type of armor all type product that's a beautifier, but you want to make sure it's got a UV protectant in it. You don't want it to just shine. You want it to. A lot of those uh, cleaners will actually dry out the tires. Yeah. So uh, you can do something like that, some type of spray on product if you want to, um, but make sure it's not petroleum based, so it's going to dry it out more. Um, all right, here's, here's one. If you're traveling more than six hours per day, if you're going to a campground that's more than six hours a day, you need to check your pressure on that trip. So, you know, kind of plan that into your trip, your next stop, your six hour away stop, go ahead and pull over and check the air pressure at that point. Um, tire gauges are inexpensive. It's kind of a nuisance. You might not want to do it, but it's really going to save you in the end if you check that tire pressure off. And that's the number one leading uh, problem is people just, they disregard that and they have issues. Um, dry rot. You can have dry rot on a tire that doesn't have 10,000 miles on it. So it's recommended now industry-wide that two or three years you be thinking about replacing those tires. Uh, it's kind of a maintenance thing. A lot of your trailer tires have no warranty on them whatsoever. And the reason for that is there's just too many factors that can cause issues with those tires. But dry rot, you can have a tire that you put on brand new and just towed it back home, it can dry rot in a couple years. So you want to get a good visual inspection. If you don't know what you're looking for, bring it out here, they offer a free tire inspection. They go out there and they check the date and the condition, the dry rotting, the cracking on the tires to make sure you're good to go. Um, if, you're, if you don't have I'll just say it. If you, if you don't have a Goodyear Endurance, if you've got a, a Chinese tire, definitely think about replacing those in two or three years. Uh, the Goodyear Endurance is only American made ST or, or trailer tire. Uh, that's a radial in the country. I think there's some bias ply tires that are made in, yes, there are in, in the, the States. Bias but the, as far as a radial tire, the Goodyear Endurance is really the only one that you can get made in America. And they have proven to be about the best that you can get in a specialty trailer tire. Uh, but if you're if you're not gonna have those, think about it two years. Lots and lots of trouble. I could probably take you out a lot right now and show you some of its own blowout damage. That this was uh, what we did uh, Wednesday. <clears throat> we, uh, the customer came in, we got it fixed up for him. Pulled it off the trailer, brought it up here. So what happens is it, you know, this, this stuff tears up a lot more than the tire. Of metal, it's going to tear up fiberglass, it's going to tear up possible plumbing, wiring. We've had them destroy furnaces when they come off there. They, they rip off that center section, just starts flapping, and it beats the devil out of everything. So it's not going to be just the tire that you're replacing a lot of times. Um, the other issue is you, a lot of times, you know, a tandem axle trailer, you don't even know you have to pull out of one of them you know, until it's too late. So they can really, really, really tear up dampers. Um, and they can, yeah. Okay, so this one took out some LP lines too, so uh, it's really tough on one. So we can't stress enough tire safety. Check those tires if you can protect them in the winter when they're when they're parked. You definitely want to do that. Another thing is once a month, move it. If it's not a problem to move the trailer or move your motor home, 
engine book up, drive it for 15 minutes. Uh, the worst thing a trailer tire can do is sit. You develop a flat spot, then it becomes out of balance going down the road. And again, it's going to cause, cause a blowout or cause issues. Um, <clears throat> so we've covered, don't assume your tires are in good shape. Make sure they are. Take care of them while they're in storage. Don't overload your camper. A lot of people like to stuff every nook and cranny with, with whatever they can fit in. Everything in the kitchen sink. Yeah, so, so you don't want to overload the camper. There's another data tag real close to the one that has the tire information on that left front corner of the camper. It's going to tell you your GVRW. That's the total amount of the camper plus the allowed contents in it. You cannot go over that. Your axles are not set up for more than that. Your tires are not set up for more than that. Um, so you want to follow that. A quick, easy thing to do is to pull up the one the truck stops. They got platform scales where they can put the truck on one and put the trailer on another and give you a readout so you know what that GVRW is. Uh, and as long as you're under that, you're safe. But don't overload that camper. A lot of the issues with tires wearing funny, bent axles, that kind of thing, is, is overweighted campers. We see it all the time. We'll take them up there and weigh them and tell the customer, you know, this is your situation. It was designed for 10,000 pounds. You got 13,000 in it. So make sure you're not overloading that camper. <clears throat> Age of the tire is another big one. So on the third page of the tire flyer, you're gonna see we put a square around the date on this one. What that means, the first two digits is the week of the year that those tires were manufactured. The second two are the years. So this particular tire was made the 12th week of 21. All right, so that two to three years is based off the manufacturer of the tire. And uh, that's, again, because even a tire stored inside will eventually start to lose the oil, the liquid, uh, the, the soft portion of the tire, and then it will dry out even in storage. So make sure that uh, your tires are within two to three years of that. And that's when you want to start thinking. I'm not saying you have to replace them in two years. I'm saying start to think about it, look at the tire base the condition of the tire with the age. Two to three years you want to start looking at. That gives you an idea of the, the tire. And then here's just a couple pictures of some of the damage that's out there caused by, by blown tire. And what we get into here is any more since COVID. I know everybody's tired of hearing about COVID, but since COVID, you may not be able to get decals after two years anymore. So if you've got decals on the lower skirting of your metal and that kind of thing. When you have damage and it tears that up, you may not be able to get decals for you. 30% uh, of the time, we're not even able to get that same color metal after three or four years. So we're having to get in the radius skirting in a different color, take the body shop, have them painted. So you get into issues anymore. Where it used to be, uh, Montana would carry decals for five to eight years and it's just not that way anymore so you want to make sure that you're taking care of your investment because some of those parts aren't readily available anymore. we can the solid colors we've got a, a gentleman that can come out and take care of those but the fades and the multi-colored single decal a lot of times you can't get after a couple of years anymore i know for a fact a lot of the uh, forest river products stop like right now it's three years and 19 you wouldn't be able to get anything so not not very fun so try and take care of those tires uh, i'd say tires are probably second uh, to awning damage as far as insurance claim goes awnings are probably the, the most damage item and then tire damage is probably second anybody have any questions about tires All right, Ben, you want to talk about the uh, the braking systems? Yeah. We've kind of set up something here. It's going to brake controller. Uh, you'll find this, something like this, inside the truck of the vehicle <coughs> trailer. Uh, kind of pulled off, hanged around here. It does, actually. And I've got a battery that would be located on the front of the trailer. Uh, just kind of set up as normal. You would squeeze your little trigger here and it will stop the brakes. They won't move. 
what that's actually doing is activating a magnet inside the drum that's pushing the shoes out. Oh, like it's got a retainer clip. We're going to do the bearings. And that will not be that loose. Hopefully not. Inside here, there are shoes, and there is a magnet. That magnet, whenever you squeeze that, will extend these out to stop the drum from turning. Who here has uh, pumped grease into these little circuits? When you do that, you want to make sure you are turning the tire. If not, this seal right here is very, not very pliable. Will actually bust. That grease can actually come into the brake shoes, and then needs to be uh, will not function properly because it's got grease and oil all over it. The other thing that can happen with those easy grease axles is you can actually hydro that seal completely out. So if you pack too much in there or try and really put a whole lot to it, it'll actually push that out. So if you want to just a pump or two, and it just sits in there too. It doesn't. Does it lock in place or anything? Now, with all you're pushing those, pushing that grease in, and spinning that wheel, it actually takes out the old grease that's inside of these bearings and inserts new. And it's doing that as it's turning. Uh, really, you want to take it all apart, look at these bearings, and clean them, make sure they don't have any pitting or spots on them or. I think this one's going Some of these will be bent from a bad spot in them. And they've also got these races that they sit inside. They sit inside them and they just turn. That's all that turns. So when we do a, a repack on your trailer, we're literally inspecting the races to make sure there's no issues inspecting the bearings and we're hand packing the bearings so it's not a matter of doing uh, doing it through the, the quick grease zerk way we're sitting there doing it just like they did forever tractors cars forever they've been hand packing these bearings and that's how that's performed um, we're also doing a brake adjustment this particular one yes right down brake adjustment on the very bottom here yeah this is a self-adjusting system so um, we're, we're setting it and then we're doing the final uh, self-adjusting by backing the camper up and it'll ratchet itself out to get that but when you're doing it if you're doing it on your own you want to have a little bit of drag not a whole lot when you're ta uh, tightening the axle nut the spindle nut <clears throat> so that's what's happening when we are doing a repack and we call to let you know hey this is where things stand with it you've got a drum that uh, or a hub that needs replaced or you've got bearings that need replaced but we're taking the seal as part of that repair and everything else from there out we're gonna we're gonna contact you and let you know what's going on so we gave you a couple more handouts one is from Lippert the other is from Dexter, I believe. And in here in the fine print, it's telling you what the recommendation service interval is for your particular brand of axle. Lippert has recently changed. Um, the brake adjustment is still three months or 3,000 miles. The uh, repack is once a year or 36,000 miles. So if you uh, go over 36,000 miles um, or one year, whichever comes first as far as the repack goes. Dexter is still 12 months or uh, 10,000 miles, I believe. So you're still having to do that. Um, once a year, you at least want to get it inspected, checked out, and brake adjustment every 3,000 miles by recommendation of the manufacturer this. Who here knows what this is? Is that a different 
This is a different style than what you normally see. It is on the front of the trailer, uh, right where you hook up. It's that little, little chain you like to hook up in front of your truck, uh, or back of your truck. You pull this out, it locks the brakes. So whenever your truck gets disconnected from your trailer, hopefully this pulls out and locks up the brakes. And that helps the camper from moving. So it does not go anywhere whenever it gets disconnected. Hopefully it stops it and it doesn't wander off the road. And, uh, you wouldn't believe how many, people, how many people think this is an emergency brake. So when you're parked at home, they pull it thinking it's going to set their, their brakes and everything will be fine. Well, it will, but those brakes are electric. So what happens in is it starts melting things. So those wires have, will become melted. Yeah, it can actually melt your brake. Magnet wires, it can cause a lot of trouble. So this is an emergency uh, situation only. So this is why you want to hook this up to something stationary on the truck and not to the chains on the camper, which has been done before too. Don't run them through the chains. They can wear out and it will break that metal uh, wire. But that's all this is for is safety. So that's it. It's not a parking lot. Right. Yes. Okay. On that axle loop and you know the center reserve. Yes. If it's when would you use that? I mean, is that something that most of the time it's used for boat trailers that that's are emerged right. into water? Yeah, we, you want to pull the water out, so I mean, if your RV has it, it's kind of a joke, isn't it? Well, it's, it's not totally. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're if you're not going to service the axle like you're supposed to every year, at least put a pump or two in there. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there that that you should do that we're not going to do that it would help on. Okay. If you are going to use right. this, like the brake thing, I, I thought about the brake thing. I thought, well, why would you do that? Well, there's a ton of people, again, that just aren't educated enough to know that it's there for emergencies. I mean, people will go home and they're they're thinking it's a mechanical brake or something, and that sets it, and once it sets it, it's done, but it's not. It takes that electric, uh, that 12 volts to operate it, and it gets pretty, pretty hot. Wait. Yes. How much time should you have the cable from the, the brake to the back of the wheel? <laughs> One of these? Yes. The, the one of the best things you can do is spend twelve or fifteen dollars and get one of the coiled ones. Oh, That'll expand to like six or eight feet. Okay. Not drag, not touch a thing. Simple replace with like a, a key ring kind of hookup. That's a, a real handy uh, upgrade to what's what's on there from the factory. They won't droop. You don't have to run them through chains or anything. Anybody got any questions? Your brake control, say you've got a brand new truck and you don't want to put uh, holes in your dash to add a brake control. There's a few different companies out of that have come out with a Bluetooth <coughs> brake control. So it plugs in to your truck, your assembly plugs into it, you Bluetooth to it from your phone to set up all your <coughs> perimeters as far as how much braking output. You do have to keep your phone on while you are towing. Yeah, but that's a handy option for the guy that just spent $90,000 on a truck and a one drill under the dash. Um, probably cheaper in the long run than buying a brake control and then having it installed. So that's an option for you. Um, one thing we didn't talk about a whole lot was tire pressure monitoring systems, which again, this is something that you can get super inexpensive on Amazon or you can get you know a ton of different ranges in this product just make sure you're getting a decent one. Uh, tire Minder's been out forever. They're kind of one of the one of the companies that started it all and they've been recently bought by Valterra which is a company that's been around in the RV industry forever so they're making uh, a lot of upgrades and such to to the systems but, um, but yeah that's also a good idea if you're not going to have one of those again those inexpensive we've been trying to find a distributor for those ones that just screw on and show you whether they're up or not we haven't found one yet but if you're not going to have something like that have something that gives you an idea of pressure 
forking your lug nuts. I would do that probably every three months, check them, just to make sure if you don't know the torque values based on the stud diameter and what kind of wheel you've got. If you don't know what they should be, you can call us, we'll tell you, but that's also a uh, very good safety point regarding wheels. Anybody have any other questions? On those little valve stem caps, you say it's just the cap what tells you if they're low? Yes, you order them for the tire pressure that you're supposed to have. So if you're supposed to be at 65 pound of pressure, when you order them, you order 65 pounders. Air up your tire to 65 pounds, screw them on there, and when they're below that, they turn red. Real simple. How does that work? How do, it's, I'm sure they're just spring loaded and the spring values are based on the, gotcha. the air pressure. So once it gets below that pressure, they just move to kind of like your LP tanks. Go on your changeover regulator. Yeah. When they get below a certain pressure, they turn from red to green or green to red. Right. Same kind of principle. So it just lets you know, hey, that one's for sure low. Even if you check before you left, you stop for gas or something, see that one of them's red, you know you've got an issue. So that would be handy just on red or oh, yeah. trailer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I got them on my charger. Um, Greg introduced them to me. He's got them on everything he owns. One of the guys that does our hitch installs, a lot of our electric stuff, he's got them on about everything. And where, where, where can you get those? Amazon. That's where he bought them. He bought mine for my charger to try and get me to sell them here, but I don't want to buy them from Amazon and put a markup on them. I'm looking for somebody that yeah. sells them, one of our distributors that sells them to bring them in. But those are a very, very simple way to, you know, again, they're not effective right. as far as high pressure, but definitely low. Well, it's an easy walk around and check. Exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to tell you exactly what's going on, but it's going to tell you if you got one in four. Yeah. Beats the heck out of the hammer. Yeah. Exactly right. What else we got, guys? Yes. What's your recommendation of setting your controller, the brakes? How, how do you do that? I've never seen one that needed to be above five, four and a half, or five. Most of the time, you're going to want to just barely grab. So you're going down the road, set it at one and a half or two, maybe two and a half. Hit the emergency and see if it's pulling on you. You don't want them to lock up, but you want it to be a decent amount of break uh, when you hit that emergency. One and a half to two and a half is probably normal. Yeah, you don't want to feel like the trailer is pushing you. You really don't want to feel like it's stopping you real quick. On that kind of even slow uh, stop that you normally have if you didn't have a trailer connected. What do you normally put yours on? Two to three. Yeah, I've never seen one. Unless your brakes are in bad shape, I've never seen one that needed really more than that. But I can feel it when I hit my brakes. You can feel it? Yeah. Okay, back it down just there. I mean, it's all feel is, is what it is. But the... Uh, most of your brake controls have a, uh, most of them are time based. So you've got two switches on them. A lot of them do, or a lot of the inexpensive ones. Time based. And so it'll be your, your output voltage. And then the time it takes to go from zero to full voltage. So you can set that dwell as well as the output. So you set your output on three, you can ramp that time from I don't know actually what the time is, but you can ramp it from instant to gradual. So it won't do it right when you hit your brakes. It'll come on a little bit further into the stop and that'll give you a little bit of a better feel when you're stopping. If you're hitting it immediately and it's going from zero to three, you're gonna feel it. If it ramps it, comes in a little softer, you won't feel it as much, but it still will be there. And you'll know it'll be there because you hit that emergency and that's what it's gonna to go to. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> use about every time I leave home with it, I, as I'm going down the driveway, I manually, I don't hit the brakes, I do it on the manual. Mm -hmm. Well, I got the factory. I got the one on the GM that comes from the factory. Anyway, I check it though, make sure that the trailer, the brakes are working back there before I use it. 
get off the road. Sure, that's a good idea too. It's always a good thing. To Anytime you're in gravel, it makes it nice. You know that they're locking up. So. Yes. What else, guys? What about over-inflated tires? I'm sorry? Over-inflated tires. Just as bad as under. It's going to wear those centers out real quick. Maybe, you were talking about how it um, decreased or increased the temperature. I mean, come on, we're at 60 degrees different. That's why you check them before you, before you move the camper. You check them to make sure. Like, just say, I'm not going to say it, but the people who have a food order, like, they leave from here, they just drive, they sit there, check it, they leave. And then exactly. Exactly. If you're on a long trip, trip, you know, check it halfway. You know, you don't necessarily have to go by the six hour. Right. Just check it halfway. You know, a lot of these are just guidelines. It's like anything else. You don't want to be ridiculous about it, but the more you check things, the better off you're going to be. It's the same with the roof. It's the same with with everything. You know, they do give you guidelines to go up there every 90 days to check your roof, but if you go up there every 60, you might catch something sooner. So, you know, they're just guidelines to give you an idea of what you need to be doing. But, yeah, if you want to check it every three hours, I mean, it's really up to you. But, uh, but definitely check it. At six, for sure. Yes. How often, <clears throat> with you, when you've got self-adjusting brakes on the trailer, is there a recommendation for how often you should back the trailer up and let them self-adjust? Well, the, the paper, the handout said every three months three is months. when you should adjust the brakes. Yep. And not every camper. In fact, probably half of them don't have the self-adjusting. So they're, they're manual. There's not a real easy way to find out if you do. Like if you get it done or do it yourself, once you tear into it, you'll know whether it does. But uh, might be able to get that from the axle number two. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, about a quarter of the trailers, I'm one of the technicians on James, about a quarter of the trailers that I see have self-adjusting. And if you've got self-adjusted brakes, you've got to have a special little tool to go in and push the adjuster away from the uh, ring so that you can actually manually adjust them. Yeah. If this is the thickness of the brake pads on the disc brakes on a car, this is the starting thickness of the brake pads on your drum brakes on your camper. And when they get down to that, you're almost metal to metal. So when they start telling you to adjust and, and check, and they've got more checking than what your car says, you're starting off with half the brake pad. Here. This nut here to set the bearings and braces in place takes 50 foot pounds to set the braces and bearings in place. Then you back them off and then tighten it up as tight as you can with your fingers. You back this off basically one half turn to give the right amount of pressure on your bearings. And then to do all the other service, uh, he doesn't know, but the soles of his kids have already been sold to the Mac man and uh, yeah, pretty much. snap on man to get the tools to actually do the correct, correct, correct to take everything off. off and get to have the everything is in order to replace the spring pads you got to be able to get those springs off and it takes snap-on gets about fifty dollars just for this one tool to 
so you can grab and pull that spring off. And then you have to make your own tools on some of this other stuff. That's a screwdriver that's been ground down to hook in to uh, the key, the, to pull the key out with. It gets to be a lot of work. Anybody got any questions? For him, the old tools you used on the uh, drum brakes on your automobiles 50 years ago that when I started. Uh-huh. Back as I did as a teenager. Do they still work on the tools? Yes. Or the tools, but the tools. The tools will work. That like this. I know the one Yes, that's where you got the big the spring over. Yep. Where you hook onto the hook it under the edge of the spring over to the top of the post right. and you flip it on. Yes. <laughs> I still have those back there. Well I still got them. They still those old style tools are in the new Mac kit. Oh, okay. But these are the specialty tools that you don't see. That you go in, reaches into the hole so you can get it. It's got a little hook on the end of it so that you can push that self adjuster away so you can turn on the adjuster. Yes. What, what grease do you recommend? So on your, this little sheet here, there's a bunch of different ones that is recommended for uh, greasing. We use, uh, what kind of grease? We, we use have? a Lucas Red and Haggy when you can get it. Uh, when you can't, we use the green. It's uh, fully synthetic, really, really good stuff. We don't see much breakdown at all on it when we get return uh, repacks. Uh, it's, it's it's good stuff made by the Lucas. That red tacky is the best of the grease. That's what our guys like the most, yes, sir. Yes. The reason I bought that is because I got a motorcycle too. Oh, yeah? With the zerks on the outside. Yep. I do. Uh, but I started using them. I got them on my camper too. And I, yep, we've, uh, we've got them back there in the five gallon bucket. Oh, you can buy these. Uh, yep. Please. Yep. Yep. These guys just use since they're hand packing them, they just use it right out of the bucket. Well, that's that's the way I learned to pack them when I started. They didn't have no packers. Or... Yep. Exactly right. Anybody else have any questions? It's also a good idea every now and then to uh, get down there and inspect your leaf spring hangers, your equalizer between your two axles. Your all the bolts and everything, maybe once a year on that kind of stuff too. We've seen this year more than I've seen a few of them this year that uh, kind of busted and broken. The, the actual shackles, the leaf spring hangers. So it's a good idea to check that out. If you're going to Alaska and you're coming back, goodness, check everything out when you get back. They just seem to not. They've got worse roads up there than they do here. It seems like it just beats the devil out of them too. What else, guys? Yes, sir. On those caps, you said you had some you know, pressure that goes red and green. They said 65. How sensitive are they? If I go down to 64, is it going to pop up? Two or three pounds. Two or three pounds, it's going to show it. Like I said, I don't have my charger with me today, or we could go out there and, and I could show you and grab some hand towels and clean her up a little bit. But, uh, yeah, two to three pounds is what it shows because it's also got the, uh, the electric monitor system to it tells you when it's low. But I had one of those sensors go bad and I didn't want to replace it right then. So he picked those up for me. We stuck it on there. And I haven't looked back really. It's just real simple. I mean, it's a quick walk around and you know you have a problem. Not overinflated, but underinflated for sure. Go. No. And again, I can't stress enough that if you're going to have a tire issue, the way I look at it, it's the same way I use this analogy all the time, but you got a $100,000 truck, you got a $100,000 fifth wheel, don't get cheap on the tires. Get you a good tire that you won't have to worry about. 
we don't get much of a deal at all on Goodyear. We're not affiliated with them at all. We do have a warehouse we buy from, but I will push the Goodyear Endurance till the end of time unless they come up with something better. It has been the best trailer tire there is. For an example, right now you can probably get a you can probably get a Carlisle trailer tire for a 205 75 14 for probably 80 bucks, 80 90 dollars. Uh, where a Goodyear Endurance is going to cost 138. So $50 per tire does sound like a lot, but in the grand scheme of things, you're hauling 200,000 down the road. Don't get cheap on a tire, a $50 tire, and that's what people do a lot of times with hitches. They've got a $100,000 truck and $70,000 pull behind camper, and they want to save 100 bucks on the, the thing that's connecting the two. It's just not a good idea, you know. But I will. I will say the Goodyear Endurance just based on, I don't remember when they were introduced. 2015 maybe, 14? Yeah, that was right when I got here. But when they started to stop making marathons and started making the Endurance. But I'm telling you, since they've been introduced, I can assure you that that's the best tire we've seen. For the money, you can, if you've got a big fifth wheel, you can actually get a G rated. 614. Now, G614 tire, it's a 14 ply tire. Uh, you can actually put those on on units, but you're talking five hundred dollars per time. Right? Something along those lines. So. Then again, if your trailer is not rated for it, right? Don't put them on there. Okay. Good question. Yep. Okay. Yeah. They're right here on these sides. What's that? Okay. Oh, those are coming. With Unscrew one real quick, and we'll pass it around. I thought those were just showing that they were nitrogen filled. All right, so here's an example. I wasn't aware that anybody had them on there from the factory. This is what you're talking about, or what I was talking about, on the ones that go from red to green. So was it green on the camper, Dan? Yes, it was green. So it was green. Now that he's taken off, there's no pressure. It's turned red. You guys want to pass that around? Those things are not expensive and they're better than nothing for certain. Yes, sir. Uh, on my original tires, I have let that thing after, I guess, three years or so. I was going up 41 minutes. I had a friend, Toyota, one of those things come apart on me. And uh, it was the last time I was going anywhere that year. I was just going I uh, went ahead and made my trip on the spare, but it, it ripped off my brake and the water on that side, too. You wouldn't believe how many people come in with a blowout damage on one side. Yeah. We repair it. They get a tire for that one. A month later, they come in with damage on the other side where they didn't replace it. Well, when I, I went ahead and I was just going up to the incidents for these days. I went ahead and went up there with no freight on the trailer and the spare. And I just let it sit back there. I said, I'm going to jump around. When I was always to the trailer show, the camper show, I was down and I see them set it in. I think they were 13 five. And I see them from, I said, I think that's what I need on this. But, and they were, difference between them two tires there. And, uh, I put them on there and I think the trailer handles a lot better, but she said moving up is what I did. Stiffer sidewall with the more plies. Right. So. You so. can do it, you just got to remember that it wasn't designed for it, so you got to adjust that pressure. Yeah. So yes, putting the price, putting what the tires cost for, I think these cost for eight pounds on the tires. Yeah. And that's what I've been running on. But I, I thought maybe the reason them things go apart because I know when I back it up, it scoots a lot when I got a jack knife one day. One of the one of the rear tires will always scoot a lot. Yep. Does that have a is that where I don't know that it would have much of an impact. I still think, you know, under inflation yeah. and uh, and dry rot sitting. Sitting is awful on the tire. 
uh, you pick up an object, say a nail or whatever, and you start losing air pressure, then the tire will overheat, and that's what causes a lot of the blowouts. Right. Okay, so those caps from Forge River, and they may not be the poundage you're needing, but those caps right there would be $4 a piece. The ones that's going around the room. So, I mean, that's really inexpensive. Again, it's not 100% accurate, but uh, it's, a, it's a quick alert if there is something wrong. You know, I mean, if it is low, it's going to be a quick alert. Yep. Is there a life on those caps? Is that something like that? Course, the only thing I can imagine is the o-ring in them going bad the seal and you can get o-ring seals for, for steel caps just about well I won't say anywhere but like auto wheel and rim you can get the, the tiny o-rings for the, the caps that don't do that but are metal you can replace those yes sir what you were just uh, auto wheel and rim could you not get those caps that place like that Auto wheel rim. I don't think they have them. They might. Yeah, right. I don't think they'll be four dollars a piece if you can get them there. But yeah, but somewhere uh, auto shop. Walmart used to have a brand of them. I don't know if they still do or not. It seems like it was. It's been years. I don't remember. They were in a green green package with black lettering. Walmart did have some Gator. I think they were Gator brand. That's what I believe they were. Get the ones that are but you have to get the ones your, that are rated for your tire pressure. Right. And again, go by the information on that placard. Right. If you've got your factory tires or you've got your factory tire specs. Well, can you read off your tire what you need? Your tire should tell you, but pressure. Tire won't know. always tell you what the camper is calling for. Okay. The tire will tell you what your max PSI you max can put in. Yes, it is. but not the camper. Right. So you need to go by what the You need to go by that placard. Like this handout right here says 65 PSI on the front, 65 on the rear. That's what you want to go with. And I worked at Walmart, goodness, 25 years ago for about two weeks. A great time. But anyway, um, it's weird that no matter what tire, you could have a, a pickup and you could put big old monster butters on it or whatever, 36, 38 inch tires and it came with 225s. They are not allowed to put air in that tire above what it says on the door. So they have to, no matter what tire is on it, they have to put what the door calls for. I'm assuming that that's kind of a standard. Yes, sir. We have a, a pressure and temperature monitoring system. Yes, sir. One control, mm -hmm. I think is the, the name of it. And the tires, we have the G-rated tires. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I call for like 85 to 90 pounds of pressure and <clears throat> when you warm weather the temperature will get up to 125 Driving and the, pre and the pressure will, will also go up to 110 yeah absolutely yeah and when we were talking about the two pounds per denture to uh, yeah. 10 degrees temperature drop we were talking stationary when you get going down the road they build up heat and pressure or pressure with heat actually mm -hmm. is the situation. You're exactly right. They can vary a lot going down the road. And I assume if they got low, they would build up higher pressure, higher temperatures than that. More higher time. temperature, yeah. yeah. Lower, your pressure would go down, your temperature would go up. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's your thoughts on uh, using nitrogen versus air? Uh, it's expensive. Um, it does slow down the fluctuation of the air, yes. whether that be uh, 1 to 2 PSI for every 10 degrees, uh, it would be 1 to 2 every 30 degrees. We're looking into a, a nitrogen generator for our new shop that we're building over here. Um, what we're finding is, um, like we called around trying to find places that would do it. There's a place in Henderson, I believe, uh, Henderson Chevrolet would do it. And then Lucas Oil out there on Greener Road, uh, oil change and car wash. They charge $5 to top one off each tire. And then they charge 60 yes. to replace your air with nitrogen. Um, I'm sure it has scientific benefits, uh, but I, as inexpensive as it is, I would think that everybody would be doing it. I know your Lexus comes with it. Uh, a lot of different manufacturers are. I, I honestly don't know how much it helps, but it's got to help. Nope. 
NASCAR used that? I'm sorry? No NASCAR race cars? I don't know. It's I, been a long heard, time since I raced. I heard they did. Now, I just didn't get just one of them. I don't know. Uh, when he got $200,000 on the line as far as winning, maybe it would be. I don't, I don't know. I really don't. I, I know it does yeah. affect it. It's just I don't know how much. And I know if you've got nitrogen filled tires now, which a lot of them do, and you're out on the road and you have one that's going low, you're going to have to put air in it. I mean, you know, most of the time you're not going to be able to find a nitrogen filling station. So I, I think it's a real good sales tactic. I just don't honestly know how much it affects uh, that temperature change. I know one thing you think, uh, like you brought up NASCAR, you know, our owner's big in the NHRA's drag racer, and I've been around it for, for years. And, None of those guys use it yet, and it's, uh, I don't know they, this for kids to run yeah, oh no, I mean, I, you know, it makes sense if it doesn't cost much to, to do, but I, the machines are quite a bit. Yes, sir. Talking about those Goodyear tires, you still want a two to three year replacement? I would start looking at them two to three years in as far as, you know, your dry, dry rot. I would, yes, absolutely. The Goodyear is just, they're taking the poor quality out of the equation. They're not taking the time out of the equation. You know what I mean? So, so your China pop tires, um, they're going to have probably not as good quality control. They're not going to have as good materials making them. So with those, you're going to have to really look hard in two to three years. The endurance, you might run till four without an issue. Um, I don't think we've. You, I, I, I wish I could tell you we don't see endurance blown out. I don't know that I've ever seen a good year endurance that's blown out. Is the thing, so I can't really give input a whole lot of input on bad. So we haven't run into them. I don't think in the history of us doing tires and buying our tire machine equipment, I don't think I've seen one good year endurance fail. And that might be because, you know, they've only been out six, seven years or whatever. But name several brands that you do see. But I've not seen a bad Goodyear Endurance yet. But I would still, you know, two to three years, I'd really start considering it. You know, over two to three years, it's not that big an investment to throw tires on it. You know what I mean? You know, you break it down, it's, it's not horrible. The damage they can do. Yeah, exactly right. You know, what's your deductible? Can you buy a set of tires for the amount of your deductible or less? Kind of got to weigh it. But, uh, I mean, tire damage keeps our, our service department going a lot. And we've seen campers, you know, 8, 10 years old that have been totaled by tire damage. You take out a twelve, fifteen hundred dollar $1,500 furnace and the labor it takes to replace things underneath it and they'll actually come through the floor so we've seen a, uh, several i won't say a lot but we've seen several units that have been told you know with some age on what else guys yes if there was something on paper that showed you how much versus temperature where you're at where you're going if there's something on paper i would say to maybe do that otherwise i'd set it right to what that sticker says really don't know what the temperature of the tire is going to do unless you have a monitor and you know if you've got a monitor and you can gauge it and you start off and you're at this pressure and this temperature and then half hour into your trip you've noticed that you're now this temperature and you're 10 or 15 percent above sure you could you could learn you know what the tire does and how it acts and, that, and temperature, that. that temperature is set for uh, cold 
not hot. Yeah. Whenever you're checking your PSI and your tires, you want to make sure the tires been sitting for a while, uh, letting it rest, and get that temperature back down. So you don't want to check it when it's right as soon as you're done with your six hour drive. No, we're talking about during the trip. Right. If it gains pressure, and temperature, he wanted to know if you could back it down by that before you even leave to notice. Back it down a little bit, yeah. I would, uh, you're wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I don't know, there, you're gonna find a lot of opinions, that's just my opinion, I don't think I would, I'd send up for, let me. Uh, your temperature changes travel depends on what the humidity is on the day your tires are filled. Because of, with a compressed air, you're pumping that, compressed humidity into your tire. Therefore, the expansion and contraction of the moisture in the air is greater than the air itself. This so, scary little fella is James. He works out in our uh, out in our shop. He's been here for several years, so he well, knows a lot about 13 years. Yep. Then I had 31 years working maintenance in an industry. Can you tell the folks what kind of air conditioner you use? What? Um, my ACs? Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, I don't think I would. I think I'd leave it uh, what your placard says. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, so my question is, what about Yes, sir, that's something we should have brought up. If you bought a 2022 camper, your camper may have 2019 tires on it. That's a very, very good point. And that's why we don't uh, we don't stock. I mean, I might have 10 inch of, of the different sizes and the Goodyear Endurance and a few car, uh, Carlisles, but I don't stock a ton of them because if I order them now, and they're not sold for six months. You've lost six months of tire life just sitting in my attic. You know what I mean? So we don't we, we get constant rotation on the tires to make sure that doesn't happen. There, there's a sporting goods store here in town that I have fun every time I go in. I look at the tire dates. They've got tires on their rack, brand new tires that are three years old. So that's another thing to consider. Is, uh, the age of the tire when you get it. And again, you know, when things were really hard to, to get right after COVID, you know, that could have could have happened. Some tires sitting around. It's like the four trucks over in Louisville and that that are two years old now, still sitting there unsold, waiting on computer chips and stuff like that. But uh, that's a very good point. So you might check your tires, even, even on a brand new trailer, they could be a little bit older than the trailer. Anything else? No? All right, I guess that concludes our seminar. If nobody has any questions. Oh yeah, let's do the draw. All right. We need somebody independent to pull that. Darren.